Thank you very much uh, and welcome to this session of Sankal. In this session, we are um, putting a spotlight on the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. And we're gonna be listening to um, three amazing speakers who have been part of this journey for us. Um, that's Zumi, Twiva, and, and of course, uh, Miyonga Fresh Fruits. Um, the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund is a four year, five million pound program put together by uh, Her Majesty's government of the UK um, through the FCD or the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office. It is managed here in Kenya by Sinapis. Um, and today we have uh, uh, given a fund, it's a challenge fund where um, small and medium enterprises apply for it. And then uh, they go through a business competition um, each year, five winners are selected, and each winner is awarded hundred thousand pounds as a grant. Mm -hmm. um, and then, they, and then they use it to develop their various uh, business models um, and innovations. The idea behind the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund is to try to approach the unemployment ecosystem differently. You know, to try to imagine that. There are different ways in which the private sector can contribute to addressing the unemployment by, by reimagining new forms of work and new ways of working and new ways to approach work. Other than you know, being, being in a tie like this, like I am sitting in a nice office and imagining you know, that's, that's, that's the way to go, that's what a job is like. And so at, at, the, at, the, at the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund, we are, um, Reimagining work and the world of work and, and, and opportunities for employment and gainful income generation. And what we're going to be hearing from the companies um, that we are partnering with, some of them are partnering with here, is how they are deploying various tools, various tools um, that help in disrupting, positively disrupting the value chains that they that they work in and opening up opportunities for young people, men and women, to then uh, get engaged in work. Without further ado, I want to invite our first speaker, um, Sabrina Dorman. Sabrina Dorman is co-founder um, of the Zumi. Zumi is a, is a, a platform, a company, private, private company, that has put together a platform that seeks to eliminate transactional barriers for women in informal trade and increase efficiency within which, with which they conduct their business. So you can imagine a woman sitting out there in toy market that no longer, no longer has to move from her stall to go all the way to Gikomba, hustle in the market, hustle in the mud, trying to get new bill open, trying to scramble for the staff, and then come back um, to her store by which time it's getting to midday, you know, and, and then she needs to open at that time. So she no longer has to do that because Zumi will do that on her behalf. And all she's got to do is place her order via the platform through Zumi Intelligent. Before I say too much, Sabrina, please take the floor and tell us these amazing, innovative ways on how we're approaching the world of work today and transforming businesses. Thank you very Happy much. Happy to. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for that for that lovely introduction, and and thanks for um, featuring me today. Um, we've had some really fantastic support from the KCJF team um, over the course of the past almost, I guess, a year, right? Um, so yeah, a little bit. I mean, Charles did a great introduction. Um, Zoomi is a B two B marketplace. Um, we're empowering women entrepreneurs. Um, who are running informal retail businesses, um, and we've started in the in the apparel um, category. Um, as he said, uh, you know, most of you have probably been in some of these markets. It's uh, you know these these informal markets. It's disorganized. It's dusty. Um, you know, to to source your stock, you have to go and meet with many different wholesalers or brokers, and you're negotiating for the best price, but you actually don't know what the best price is because it's not posted anywhere. You have to pay to get yourself and your goods back and forth from the from the market and and tow your goods back to your shop. 
Um, and then the last piece, which um, I think many of us realize is uh, these retailers are usually unbanked um, or they don't have a, a digital record of their business with which they can go and get um, access to financial services and credit. Um, so this is the Zoomi customer um, that we are looking um, to kind of bring from that informal, um, you know, offline uh, way of working. Um, online, give them the tools of technology, give them access um, to services um, that tech and the, and the digital uh, inf infrastructures can provide. Um, so I like what Charles was saying about reimagining the word work or reimagining the word job, um, because this is exactly what Zoomi is doing. Um, our customers might already have a small business that they're running, um, but they might also not. We've had a number of women come to us and say, hey, I want to get started with a business. Um, and how do I get started? And that is, you know, the perfect moment for Zoomi to come in and give advice on product, give advice on price, give advice on how to organize their transactions and keep track of their records, um, how to make sure that they're building their business so that they can get access to credit and build it and, and build it going forward. Um, so we've been able with KCJF, we've been able to help these women entrepreneurs through the use of our tech. So um, really three main, main um, improvements uh, are brought to their business just by working with Zoomi. Um, so the first one is by ordering through our platform, they now have a price list, whereas they used to have to go to the market chase around for the goods that they want, try and negotiate the best price, try and find the right supplier. Now through the app, they have a list of the products, the name, the price, the category, et cetera, um, and they can see it published there. So already they're saving money um, on the price of the product that they would otherwise have to, have to go and negotiate for themselves. The second is that we offer uh, delivery right to their location. Um, so we can either, either deliver straight to them or they can come pick up in one of our hubs. That means that they're saving um, on the cost of getting themselves back and forth um, from, from restocking their shop. Um, so already just the savings that they get on the price of the product and the price of logistics, um, they're seeing about a 28% income lift just from those savings. The third thing that we're now able to do is once they've been ordering through Zoomi for, for um, you know, a number of orders, we then are able to evaluate them for credit. And once they are able to take on credit, um, they're able to grow their business by more than 2x already. Um, so that means that they're well on their way to getting out of this cycle of just kind of survival subsistence retail, and they're actually able to grow their business. So we've had a great example of some of our retailers. Charles mentioned Toy Market. We have a number of retailers in Toy Market who have already gone through this journey with us. Um, they've you know, started ordering with us, started saving money, got evaluated for credit. Now they've taken credit a number of times. They've already grown their business more than 2X. They've opened up a second shop and a third shop. And so now we don't just have this one woman entrepreneur who is running her own shop. She's now, she's now the business owner of three shops and she employs two other people. So now we have three jobs that have come out of this ability to just get this woman connected um, through Zoomi's platform um, with these three levers to, to grow her business. Um, so I'll leave it there. I think, um, you know, it's pretty easy example of what happens when you're able to bring um, some digital infrastructure um, into, uh, into some of these markets where they just need a couple of tools to really transform their business and be able to, to increase employment, so to speak, um, or, or opportunities for work. But thank you for that. Um, I want to put you on the spot a little bit um, because the, the audience, um, in the audience, there's people who know women in, in similar uh, trade or similar situations where they want to start a business like that. Um, and this, this is not hearsay. This is something that Zoom is doing every day. Mm -hmm. So if they're out there and they, are, and they, you know, they have contact with this, some, of those, some of those women in, in formal upper retail, 
and they want to link them up with Zoomy, how do they do that? Because yeah, that's a great question. A yeah. <laughs> so that's a great question. Um, the first and foremost, they can email us at hello at zoomy.africa. They can get in touch with us um, via our, our um, we have a toll free um, hotline that they can call. I can share that with you afterwards. You might, you might um, and good. then if they're in a particular market, um, we have about 13 uh, what we call hubs around Nairobi. Um, so if they're in a particular market, they're all concentrated in the in the um, kind of main commercial centers of those markets. Um, and they can just walk in and take a look at the products, meet uh, meet one of our officers, learn about Zoomy, learn about how it works, um, and go from there. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, a couple of different channels um, to get onboarded. Um, we are at the stage of um, you know kind of rolling out a more I guess mass marketing um, strategy where people will be able to um, to come to us in a, in a much more um, broad stroke um, kind of manner. Um, but at the moment, it's um, it's through the toll-free line, um, through our, our hubs or through email. Are you able to type in the toll-free line on the chat? Yeah, sure, let me just... Yeah, so the, the audience can pick it up from there. It was just a mention of some of the, where the hubs are. Um, in case... Yeah, so I'll just give a couple examples. So within Nairobi, um, we're in uh, Korogocho, Kalangwari, Toy Market, Kivirai, Kiambu, uh, Riru, Fika, Machakos. Um, what am I missing? I think there's a couple more that I'm missing off the top of my head, but those are the ones around Nairobi. And then we also have upcountry where Nyeri, um, Eldoret, um, Caricho, and uh, Busia. Last question. Last yeah. question. How, how, how has tech enabled for all of this to happen? Um, I, I mean, tech is basically, <laughs> it's, the, it's the only way this has been able to happen. Uh, everything else would have to be done, you know, person to person, which is just a, a massive yeah. undertaking. Um, I mean, something as simple as publishing a price list um, enables people to make a fast decision, mm -hmm. right? Um, something as simple as connecting a supplier's product list with that product list um, it just enables the sale to happen much faster. Um, something like offering credit allows somebody to place another order without having to worry that they have to sell through all of their stock um, before they can place another order. So it just brings a massive amount of efficiency to the entire supply chain and to the entire market. Um, and, you know, we're not just benefiting the, the retailer. Um, who's trying to you know increase the size of her business we're also helping the suppliers on the other side who you know they can't place more orders for more goods until they sell through their yeah. their stock um, yeah. and so by working with zoomy they're able to sell through faster because they have access to a much larger um, uh, you know number of customers and that's great for their business as well um, so it's just I mean it's a classic marketplace I um, mean we're working both sides of it and bringing efficiency um, to both sides um, that just enables people to increase their volumes increase their frequency of sales um, and grow their business Thank you very much, Sabrina. Um, okay. I'll add please, things in the chat. <laughs> yes, please stay on a call until the time you drop off. In, in the event that you drop off, we'll take questions and then we'll transmit those questions to you later on um, so that you can engage with the different kinds of audiences who want to learn more and also you know, participate in the process um, of that. Yeah, I, uh, I want to take this opportunity to introduce Peter Kironji. Peter Kironji is the CEO of Twiva. And, and Twiva are also in the space of reimagining the world of work and, and you know, how young people can participate in employment opportunities you know, that technology can present. Um, and Peter, Peter, run with it. You, 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 you have some 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 awesome invention in there you know uh, i'm a big fan of seeing how young people can participate as social influence as social influencers um so show us what you got thank you Charles. um it's a pleasure to be here um my name is peter kironji i'm uh, the co-founder and ceo of twiva 
And Twiva is a social commerce platform uh, that um, helps businesses and particularly so MSMEs, micro, small and medium enterprises to gain access to markets. And we do that through uh, social media influencers who are our resellers. Um, <clears throat> Twiva was started back in 2019 and it was started as an influencer marketing platform. And our job was to connect businesses, again, particularly targeting MSMEs, to connect them with the influencers so that they can help them market their goods and services. Then COVID-19 happens in 2020, and we are doing listening exercises. And what we discovered is that the small businesses were asking for more, more than just the brand awareness that um, we were helping them with. What they cared for was conversion, and this is sales conversion, understandably so. So then we started to look at were well, there other ways that we could serve them and serve them better. Um, at the same time, it happened to be that uh, the infrastructure that we are using, the ecosystem it is, our social media platforms, we're also considering having commerce capabilities on their platform to serve small businesses. So ours was just to look for ways to leverage technology to now start to uh, push product and to sell and not just to help them uh, with the marketing bit. So um, I'll walk you through a few ways in terms of how we are leveraging a technology to, if my slides can work here, just give me a second. So. Maybe prefer, before we talk about the solution, it's always, of course, good to talk about um, why we exist as, as to even what we are trying to do for the small businesses. Um, for us, we believe that one of the main challenges that our small businesses or MSMEs continue to face is lack of access to market. Um, and those that are at least online, given that a good number of them are actually still offline and they're not taking advantage of digital platforms like Twiva to uh, reach consumers. And those that are online don't have the light digital marketing skill set to actually uh, take advantage of these digital platforms fully. There's also another challenge that, of course, are the whole ecosystem around e-commerce is facing, which is lack of trust and that of course is affecting the small businesses more given that um, they don't have the reputation online to actually be believed by consumers that if i buy a product online from a small business do they even have the logistics and the capacity to get the products to me can i trust them so there's the trust factor um, that we are trying to bridge um, we know that businesses don't have the digital marketing skill set to actually place their product online in a manner that they can actually uh, succeed in uh, sales conversion. So how we are approaching this, our flavor is Twiva is, can we leverage an infrastructure that gives us resellers that compensate for the lack of digital marketing skill set that majority small business owners don't have? And can we also attempt to bridge the gap of trust that a lot of uh, consumers face when they are interacting and transacting with small businesses. And for those that are offline, can we look for ways to bring them online and to do so in scalable ways that actually don't introduce um, other barriers like the cost of using the digital platforms. So um, our solution is an influencer driven social commerce platform. The influencers here being the resellers. And we do this in two flavors. We continue to do the marketing, but now have started to do uh, the selling bit with the KCJF help who uh, give us the grant to uh, pilot the idea. And once it was working to scale it, and I'll also walk you through the numbers of the successes that we have seen uh, from this. So through using social media influencers, as resellers and looking for ways to automate a pushing of product from our platform to all social media platforms, we have been able to close the trust gap because influencers tend to be more believed and trusted among their circles uh, than small businesses. They also are known today as content creators, which is to say they are actually good at it. They know how to package or repackage content around these products in a manner that 
he articulates the benefits, the features, and the value of those products that they are pushing. Hence, compensating for the lack of digital marketing skills that the small business owners don't have. And of course, it is an easier way for us to move them online. So I'll walk you through how uh, the platform works in terms of how we are leveraging technology to uh, try and serve more uh, MSMEs. <clears throat> we try to simplify the process, given that again, these businesses don't want to work with a complex platform, again, because of the lack of uh, digital marketing skill set or the technical bits that would be required. So. A business will just need to download our application or sign up online and all they have to do is to list the product and these are the basics of what's the title of the product, the description of it, and maybe a few uh, variations and maybe a product photography. Um, and all we are allowing them to do is to take that camera with the uh, phone and use that to create content on the product. We simplify it to a one screen or one page. And that's all they have to do. And they do it once, they list once. Once they do that, those products are exposed to all the influencers or the sellers that are on our platform. And then the influencers would select what aligns with their brand, their content, or what they believe would resonate and they can sell to their followers. Um, and of course, we have the technology layer, which will do the product matching to the influencers by looking at the, the data points around the influencer and pushing products to them that they, um, the platform believes they would have better conversions. So once an influencer selects the product that they believe in, we do everything else. And that is to take that one product listing and push it to all the social media accounts that belong to a particular influencer. And then, of course, uh, people would, uh, consumers would discover these products on these social media platforms. And we must agree that majority of people, and particularly so um, the Gen Z and millennials, have consumer behaviors that are skewed towards um, social commerce or um, social media platforms, because this is where they are spending most of their time. And what we are trying to do for the businesses is to take them where consumers are spending a lot of their time. So to just give you visibility into why this is quite powerful, imagine if a product or a business was to list one product and within three minutes, a thousand influencers select that product given that we have a database in thousands of influencers. And each influencer today has an average of three social media platforms. That is to say that within three minutes, a product can be listed across 3000 online shops without spending a single shilling or a single dollar in setting up the infrastructure of e-commerce or marketing. So then we are able to bring them to market fairly quickly without them having to incur any cost. And that's the uh, power of this platform. And again, because um, of the uh, um, backing we are getting from KCGF to make sure that we continue to advance this, we continue to do the marketing bit, preferably I won't spend too much time here, but um, there's still a lot that still desire the uh, marketing bit, and we help this in a few flavors. We believe one of the main pillars of helping small businesses excel online is creating good content, whether that is through the influencers or actually creating capacity for us to actually help them create content that actually pushes this product or these brands online. So we do content creation, help them engage influencers, and of course, give them tools to track performance of uh, the influencer marketing campaigns that they are learning online so that we can advise them in terms of here's what people are saying about your product or your company, your brand, and here's how you can actually improve to scale and to reach more consumers. Um, is there a market for what we are doing? We all know that influencers today are selling and promoting products on social media. And of course, you know, there are things like social media, um, say Facebook shops, Instagram stores that influencers are taking advantage of. There has been um, studies and the most recent one by Caribou that has notes that nine out of MSMEs are actually lying on social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp to transact business. So it only makes sense for us to present uh, the commerce capability so that 
not only just to engage their consumers with messaging features, but they can actually transact on these platforms. And 32% of all e-commerce on the continent are being conducted on social media. Again, on the reseller bit, 63% of users would trust our influencers more than they would trust the small businesses. And of course, a lot of number of people are relying on the recommendation from these influencers before they can consider buying products. Are we seeing any successes? Is this something we can scale? Um, we have registered businesses or MSMEs north of 1,000, and that continues to be an upward trajectory. Um, registered influencers or the resellers north of 3,500 with a good traction. And of course, uh, thousands of listed products on our platform. Uh, we have also been fortunate enough to work with mature corporates like the Kenya Revenue Authority uh, to work with uh, NGOs like um, MasterCard Foundation because we can use the same infrastructure to do more in terms of the impact we are, we are creating for our businesses. One of these was um, helping businesses build capacity and resilience around COVID-19 so that they know how to structure the businesses and where to seek help so that they could withstand uh, the economic shock that was introduced by COVID-19. And of course, we have seen other successes, uh, winning grants and prizes, north of 300K from, among others, the Kenya Catalytic Job Fund that is helping us take these to uh, many businesses and create dignified jobs for the content creators online. Um, our belief at Twiva is that if we can truly help these small businesses, which we all agree that are the majority job creators, not only in Kenya, but across the continent, if we can help them be more um, resilient, more sustainable, and help them to scale, they can actually help us solve the challenge of the day, which is lack of unemployment or rather lack of employment uh, on the continent. Our job is to empower that small business to create at least one more job for a young person on the continent. And um, we believe this type of partnership, the case CJF, um, and participating in this kind of forums and discussions help us activate the right partners uh, so that we uh, can move forward. Uh, the last thing I could mention is that we are currently raising our seed round of 3 million with 1M uh, committed. Um, and we'll be doing this over the course of the three uh, weeks. So just in case there are investors, um, there's an opportunity to jump in, actually be something, um, a success story of how we help our businesses be more resilient and actually scale. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Peter, um, for that. You've actually brought in a nice angle there in terms of, you know, um, social creativity, you know, like, like the, the creative industry and how young people in Kenya can harness creativity from the creative industry to help businesses to grow. I mean, for a long time, uh, people have been wondering, how do we tap into creative industry as a resource? you know, and grow it as a proper industry, you know, um, because people imagine that creative industry is all about entertainment, it's all about composing and singing songs, you know, but what you're saying is the creative industry is critical to growth of small businesses in Kenya, and every young person who's listening to you right now is seizing that opportunity that, you know, they can play a role in influencing others within their sphere of influence to enable for a small business to grow. Please stay on call. Uh, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, um, who is Roy. Uh, but stay on call. There's going to be a session um, to interact with you, um, to, to, to share more in terms of the practicalities. I mean, how can young people jump onto it right now? Um, so please, please stay on call. Begin to share your contacts on the chat uh, so that we can then you know, get that going. Our next, our next speaker um, is going to be Roy Joker. Roy, Roy, are you in your house? Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Happy ah, to be here. There you are. <laughs> Roy is the vice president of uh, Market Force right now. Um, he used to work with Digiduka and then Digiduka and Market Force uh, merged. So now they they, they trade as Market Force. And, and they have an amazing solution. Um, you know, besides the Regia Regia, it's, it's this idea, which is now a solution for MSMEs to diversify, 
to diversify their sources of income. You know, so, so there's a couple of factors in there. One is that 70% of SMEs in Kenya do not live to see their third birthday. They fall down before three years. But annually, 40,000 40, MSMEs and SMEs close down every year in Kenya. You know, we have 40,000 closing. And there's, there's numerous opportunities that then we can tap into to mitigate on that and, and prevent as many of those from folding up. One of it is, can they have diversified sources of digital finance, you know, um, digital solutions that enable them to raise money, you know, beyond just the everyday operation of their business, um, you know, and, and, and stay afloat and grow. And Roy is gonna walk us through this amazing solution that they have put in place Today it's reaching tens of thousands, if not yeah, in, uh, up to close to 100,000 MSMEs that are already interacting through this uh, and, and merging it with the Reja Reja. For those of you who've had Reja Reja, um, which is a, also, um, you know, eliminating transactional barriers for small businesses. So uh, you know the distribution is seamless. You know, a, a small duka doesn't have to worry about distribution. The, the stock will come to them. Roy, before I say too much and take over your presentation, uh, <laughs> please take the floor and share with us. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Thank you, Charles. That's uh, <clears throat> a very good introduction to what we do. So I'll take you through a quick presentation uh, just to expand a little more on that. So, so yeah, as Charles said, uh, at Market Force, we, we are, what we're really looking to build, or what, we are, what we're building is um, what we're calling the operating system for informal retail trade in Africa. And when what that really means is, um, you know, we are, we are putting together the digital commerce and digital payments capabilities um, that will really bring these 100 million uh, MSMEs, um, the kiosks that actually uh, distribute uh, the bulk of consumer goods in Africa into what we're calling the digital economy. Um, and, and, and these guys actually serve the 1.3 billion, um, you know, Africans on the continent um, who rely primarily on, on the mom and pop shops or the kiosks, the corner shops um, for their daily needs. <clears throat> so the, the problem that we are, we are solving is actually that, uh, you know, the informal retail uh, trade is, is really fragmented, which makes it quite expensive um, for, for both uh, manufacturers of uh, FMCGs or uh, fast moving consumer goods, but also digital financial service uh, providers to distribute their, their products through this, you know, this fragmented ecosystem. And, and so that's really the problem we are solving. Um, where we are bringing together a platform that will um, <clears throat> help, you know, fast moving consumer goods manufacturers get their products into this network of merchants that we have put together but also uh, allowing digital financial service providers. So your, your, your KPLC uh, tokens, your airtime, uh, bill payments like Zuku, all these are be able, will, you will be able to be served through your local kiosk. Um, and for consumers, it just means uh, a lower cost, but also um, a bigger sort of variety um, of, of, of the, you know, the breadth of services and goods that they can access. Uh, what the solution looks like, it, it's an app. So this is an app that kiosks download, uh, create their account, um, and then they are immediately able to start ordering for goods, uh, which we are able to, to deliver to them within the next day, uh, within 24 hours. And recently we've actually started uh, same day deliveries uh, for some of, of, of uh, the places where we serve in Nairobi. Um, through the same app, they can also sort of uh, earn extra uh, income by you know, becoming distributors effectively uh, of digital financial services. So it, what, it, what it simply means because of our app, you can now go to your local kiosk uh, and pay any of these bills. You, know, you can pay your DSTV or your GoTV, your Zuku, your Fiber, um, and you can even start, we, we, we have also introduced uh, other financial services um, such as insurance, uh, which means we're commoditizing insurance, making it easy to access and bringing a bigger pool of people through our partners into, into, into the insurance fold. 
So that's really what we're building. And, and <clears throat> on the other hand, we're also sort of giving manufacturers um, a dashboard that allows them to be able to, you know, have a pulse on what is happening uh, with their products in, 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 our, in our network. So our 100,000 kiosks, uh, any of our manufacturing partners, any of our digital financial services partners, they can log in at any time and see how their product is, is performing um, to, to a very granular level. So how is my product performing in Kawangware today, for example? And that allows them to be able to then very quickly uh, respond um, you know, uh, to, to the market needs. Um, now, uh, we've been fortunate to have very good backers. Um, early on, uh, you know, we were able to sort of uh, get KCGF uh, to back us. At that point in the year 2020, we only had about 6,000 merchants. Um, but through that investment, we were able to then ramp up, up quickly to 100,000 merchants. Uh, this investment also enabled us to be able to then get on the following uh, funding. Um, and I'm happy to... Sorry, sorry, Roy. Is your screen frozen? Ah, yes, apologies. I was in full screen mode. I think that's why I didn't. So this is where I was describing what, what we built in terms of our platform. So digital commerce on one side, where um, the kiosks are able, are able to order and we deliver on the next day. But they're also able to resell digital services. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't think uh, we missed much. Um, and this is the dashboard that we give to our manufacturing partners that they're able to sort of log in at any time and see how, how their products are performing in the, mar in the market. Um, yeah, so I was saying through the investment that we got, the early support that we got from KCJ, um, it, it actually allowed us to, to sort of really grow our network. Um, and this is not just within Kenya, because today we, we are in yeah, five countries. So Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, um, and soon uh, Ghana and, and Ethiopia as well. Um, so this, this early injection of funding enabled us to really grow from our initial 6,000 merchants to the current 100,000. Um, and I'm happy to, to report that, you know, we've just closed our Series A round of about $40 million, um, which will see us grow to another 500,000 merchants in, in these countries um, that we are targeting. Um, this, these countries actually serve a population of about half a billion. Um, consumers today. So we're confident we'll be able to bring on 500,000 merchants onto our network um, to just make it more efficient for them to serve um, this, this group of consumers. Um, and you know, our ambition over the next five years is really to reach uh, a million merchants, um, uh, but also increase uh, the amount of uh, business they're able to do through us. Um, not only be able to, to, to serve their customers with digital financial services, but also, and also FMCGs, but also we want to digitize the, the currently 98% of retail payments that goes through these guys, which is currently in cash. Uh, we want to make a majority of that uh, become, uh, you know, digital payments. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it in terms of uh, who we are. Thank you very much, uh, Roy. For that, you know, truly amazing. One of the things that have come out there for me really is how you know using the last mile distribution model, the Roger Red, yeah, and then you are able to to nest nest um, the digital payment systems for the for the small dukas within that last mile distribution, and you are then doing an end to end connection. You know, you have you have the dukas uh, who are able to then receive your products. But you also have the the manufacturers, you know, and, and, and the distributors who are then able to um, to, to to join together. It's it's amazing. It's amazing, you know. And, and within a short period of time, you are, you have reached hundred thousand um, MSMEs. I'd like for you to hold on um, there, as oh, yeah. uh, we. I'd like for you to hold it hold on there as we uh, open it up now um, for discussions. Um, I, I want to take it back briefly to to Peter um, at Twiva. Um, Peter, are you there? Um, I am so, uh, yeah. So, so speaking practically, Peter, you have an audience. Speaking practically, what kind of SMEs are you looking for? What is the criterion um, to to onboard them? 
and and what is the type of the social influencer you are looking for um what is the criteria on and how do you find each other how do you find the smes how do they find you how do you find the social influencers and how do they find you uh, and you have an active audience here and this could spur a lot of of uh, you know business and growth right now i appreciate the question um <clears throat> Number one, I think it's important I start with um, where we started this Twitter, um, which was influencer marketing, just connecting uh, influencers and businesses. So at, then we also realized that we must balance the demand and the supply side. So you don't want to have, because it's a multi-sided platform and continues to be, you don't want to have a lot of social media influencers on the platform, but um, the businesses are not significant to create opportunities for all. So we started by limiting the signups, but, and one of the main reasons is that if you have so many influencers, uh, or today you have these sellers, the problem was that they would ju just sit on the database waiting for businesses to engage them to create opportunities. But now with the social commerce bit is that as an influencer, as a reseller, the moment you join the platform, you can start to create a job earning or diversify your income from day one, because you can start to list these products on a commission, a significant one. And of course, some products, um, you can mark up the price because they are listed at wholesale price. So that sort of helps us create a balance uh, on the platform. Um, having said that, the businesses we target are those that have products that can sell well on social media platforms. And looking at the data, those tends to be um, products that are costing 300 Kenyan shillings or $3 to 10,000 Kenyan shillings, $100. That's where we have volumes. Um, some would go to 15, uh, 150 US dollars um, a unit. In terms of the industry, the categories, we are seeing more successes on things like fashion, beauty, personal care, uh, electronics, and home decor. That's, that's where we have a lot of volume. Uh, but we are also surprised by folks that we would never go out targeting, including corporates, folks who have um, thousands of products expressing interest. But of course, our focus will continue to uh, be um, serving the MSMEs. But of course, we are not going to close the door for um, anyone else who has a product that can excel on social media platforms. Where do we source our influencers and what type of social media influencers? We started by getting this long, by gravitating towards mega influencers. And the hypothesis was that these are the people who have a brand, folks who understand um, how to navigate the ecosystem. But what we have learned is actually, if you break influencers into data points and have a discovery module, and here's where we are starting to leverage emerging technologies like machine learning, if you find a way to remove the bias out of the equation, the numbers start to shift south to more micro and nano influencers. And these are folks we should really call influencers um, in traditional sense of the buckets that they are classified in, but they have better conversion. It is easier for someone who is followed by an army of say, a thousand people or 500 people who follow them for a specific reason. And what we have noticed is that there's this lady who is doing makeup tutorials on YouTube and just has a subscription or rather 500 subscribers, but they follow her for that particular reason that um, you actually can speak into the difference in the types of products you're using, how to actually uh, use them. So the conversions tend to be higher for folks who are specialized as influencers. So we are starting to gravitate more to the nano, the micro ones, folks who are specialized in one niche of the content they create. And we also believe that's also an advantage for us because then that gives us a framework and a pathway to scale um, and to serve more businesses. The sign up process is just downloading an application. Currently, we just have Android and in the process of are creating iOS through a partnership with an Australian based venture builder so that we can serve more people. Um, so it's either they go to um, Android application or sign up online through our web application, which is accessible uh, to all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, you mentioned something there uh, before I go over to Roy. 
conversion. Please tell us um, and tell the audience, what does conversion mean in this context for an SME? And it does, does conversion apply both to the SME or and, and, and to the social influencer or how does the social influencer make the money and how does the SME make the money? Yeah, um, I appreciate the question. And for us, we actually don't really like the word social media influencer because um, it's sort of a buzzword. And how we are starting to, the person we call an influencer, right, to invite someone who can convert, can create value for the business before they capture. Because if you look at traditional ways of influencer marketing, is that you are paying for attempt. You're paying an influencer to attempt to create value for you, but rarely do they do so. And what we are doing is to flip that equation. Can you sell something and then capture value out of it? So we judge you. I, you influ whether we judge whether you influence you depending on your ability to have sales conversion. Can you actually sell a product? Some mega influencers in um, thousands and hundreds of thousands cannot sell a single product. That to us is not an influencer. Um, and we are starting to call the more um, influential sellers, folks who can actually uh, sell a single unit, two, 10 units uh, to a business. So that is how we look um, at the influencers that we work with. Because we also believe, one, that the future of e-commerce uh, will tend, will start to gravitate towards social uh, commerce. And one of the things, and particularly so for the continent, we are social people. And um, offline, we have transacted in social setups, having a conversation. Some folks like to negotiate uh, and actually understand the history or the story behind a product before you buy it. And all we are doing is to now digitize that. Um, so we believe the future of e-commerce will uh, be the social commerce. And if that is to be the case, there's also another shift within the ecosystem, which has been looking at traditional e-commerce. Uh, it has always been people finding products. You go to a platform like Jumia and others like Sky Garden, and you are looking for a product. But you look at social commerce, you flip that, and now products will start to find people. And ours is to present that option and that capability to the small businesses so that they can compete fairly uh, with the big boys in the ecosystem. Value chain disruption right there. You know, products finding people instead of people looking for products. That's that's powerful. Um, so I'm going to pause on you, um, Peter, for a second as I uh, pass the mic on to to Roy. Um, Roy, you still there? Yeah, yeah, there you are. Now, Roy, how how do you find the the small businesses that are part of the, the market force amazing solution. How do you find these guys? And, and when you find them and you go into this partnership and, and they are, they are you know, you know, working with the diversified um, financial uh, solutions, how do they make their money and how do you make your money? Uh, this is because the audience here, uh, I'm sure, if not 100%, they know some are running a small business. And they, and after this, they, they might want to you know link or, or share information about Reg Reg Market Force with them. Uh, but the person asked, but how, how, how do they make the money? So how do they make the money? Hey, th thanks for that question, Charles. Um, so there's only really one, one way to find these guys, yeah? Is, which is to go to where they are. Um, we actually have um, a huge sort of uh, workforce of, of um, of, of gig workers actually. Um, and these guys are our sales agents. They actually go out, uh, create the relationships with these kiosks, uh, introduce them to our platform. Um, but increasingly, we are also seeing that uh, we are having a lot of uh, referrals amongst uh, the kiosks themselves. So we are having a big number of users who've been referred. So, you know, I've been using this app, please go to the Play Store and download it. And we are having a, a huge number of organic or, or referred users. Um, but that's really that's really how we find them. Um, now, in terms of how they make money, so you know, there the, the are two things that we we we, we sort of um, the, our value proposition hinges around two main things that we we bring to them, right? One is the digital commerce capabilities, which means we have this um, um, shop, right, or an online wholesale where you can come in and order any of the goods that you need to sell. 
what this means is you don't have to close your shop, uh, go find a wholesaler, uh, find a means of transport, spend the money to bring the goods back to your shop. It means you can simply sit, uh, you know, within your shop um, and during the times where you have uh, a bit of time, an hour or two hours, come in into the app, uh, select the items you want, um, and we will bring them to your shop uh, within 24 hours. And we're actually closing that delivery window. Um, we're currently in about five towns in Kenya. Um, and uh, we are in, also in Lagos in Nigeria, and we are in Kampala as well as Kigali, um, and opening in other sort of cities around Africa. So that's that's really what we do now. So on the one hand, with the digital commerce capabilities, what we're doing is saving you money and increasing your, your margins. So because you don't have to spend time and money going to find a wholesaler uh, to source for the goods yourself, and because we are able to sort of create direct manufacturer relationships as a, as a, as a distributor, it means then we're giving you the best margin possible on the goods that you're selling. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have the digital payments capabilities. Um, so in, in digital payments, we allow you to be able to collect payments um, from, from, from you know, your, your customers. You'll realize when people are paying digitally, they tend to spend more um, rather than when they're paying in cash. So that's the other opportunity that we bring on. And we, we actually take away the, the friction around the transaction costs. So if you realize, if you go to your local kiosk today, you, you know, um, they either don't have a TIL number because the, the, the transaction fees are too high, or they'll ask you to include the withdrawal fees, you know, Tumana Kutua. So that's really the, the solution that we're giving, where we, you, we're not charging the customer to make that payment and we're not charging the shopkeeper to receive that payment. So we're now starting to convert a lot of these. It's actually 98% of transactions at the kiosk that are done in cash. But we, through us, we want to sort of move that to digital. Um, we also allow them to make money by becoming resellers for digital services. It means then now um, anyone can go to a kiosk um, and pay for their electricity tokens, um, buy airtime, pay for a lot of these other bills uh, that we are bringing on board. Um, and, and that's really you know, the value proposition that we're bringing to these kiosks. Thank you very much, Um I want to open it, open it now to questions from our, from our audience. Uh, if, if anybody has a question, please, uh, this is the opportunity to interact with these two companies. Um, raise your hand. Uh, if you want to put on your camera, uh, please do so and, and ask them as many questions as you have. Uh, yeah, I was on mute. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, please just go ahead, uh, introduce yourself, your organization, and then you go ahead with a question. All right. Um, I'm just going to keep my video off for now, for today. <laughs> um, my name is Sylvia, and thanks for this opportunity. I work for a company called Hept Analytics, and be uh, really more majorly focused on machine learning, data analytics, and AI for organizations uh, across various verticals in Africa. My question goes to all the presenters. Kudos, by the way, on, on what you're doing in the social commerce, social space in, in the African continent. But the one challenge that uh, commerce platforms or e-commerce platforms keep um, complaining about or uh, decrying themselves about is the issue of digital literacy. How do you, how have you guys been able to maintain the sellers and the buyers, not necessarily the buyers, but most buyers are quote unquote digitally, digitally savvy, but then once you find people like, for example, market force, you're dealing with people in a space where most of them have like feature phones and all these things. How are you bridging that gap and how has been the experience in maintaining them on the platform when sometimes internet and connectivity is a challenge? Thank you. Okay. Uh, th thanks for the question, Sylvia. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so a big part of our job is really to educate um, our users, um, not only, and it's not a one-time thing, right? So because we are continually uh, improving the services that we, we bring on, we are continually bringing on more and complex and complex products, such as insurance, we have to keep on um, educating, you know, uh, our primary user, who's the kiosk, on how to, how to use our platform and what are the features and benefits. So we actually have a dedicated uh, team of trainers 
Um, and these guys actually are able to train uh, our sales agents, but they're also able to go and train a partnership with another startup supported by KCGF, which is Arifu, where they're able to deliver training to our users um, through uh, USSD. Um, what, what we're also doing to make sure that we capture uh, everyone with this opportunity, not just the ones who are able to, to use our smartphone app, uh, which by the way, is about 90% of our users are, are actually able to use the smartphone app. So smartphone penetration has actually really gone high uh, within this segment of users. Uh, but we also have, um, you know, WhatsApp and USSD as an option. Um, if you don't, if you don't have, if you're not able to download or use our Android app. So those are some of the things we're doing to sort of get ahead of this uh, problem and be able to make sure that um, all our users are continuously trained and we proactively um, are able to sort of think about any issues that, that might hinder them from using our system. Yeah, um, I think there was a bit of it that I could also uh, respond to, which was um, how do we compensate for the lack of digital literacy? I think for us, one is that we are using the social media influencers as they sell us. And of course, they tend to understand not only the ecosystem, but they have uh, the skill set that um, would allow them to position products for success on a digital platform and particularly so on social media platform. For social media platform is more of the content that you're pushing. Um, and what we do is that at the point where a business has listed a product and maybe, and we have seen this, a lot of businesses are not describing the product in a manner that you understand the product. For Sometimes they just post one photo that doesn't actually show you uh, the quality or the features of the product. So what we do is at the point where the resellers, the influencers are selecting the products they want to sell, we allow them to repackage the content. That is taking better photos because they are the best people to create content. And again, to describe the products extensively on the product description so that they are compensating for the lack of digital literacy that a lot of small business uh, owners continue to navigate. So that's the layer one. Layer two, of course, is to invest in uh, courses, webinars, and training material that help um, the businesses to start to build capacity as well as the sellers so that they, they can close that gap. Um, before before um, Christine, I, I say Christian, their hand is up. Before um, Christian goes, uh, just also to respond to Sylvia's question, that the, um, the Kenya government um, through the Ministry of ICT is also running a, a massive program called Ajira Digital Program. And a Jira digital program basically is a mass training of, of young people in Kenya on digital skills, digital skills, digital capability, and, and just building capacity for them to be able to seize opportunities that are presented by the various digital spaces, you know, um, online work, uh, e-commerce, and that kind of thing. It's a massive multi-billion training program. It is uh, it has courses in there. And young people in Kenya are encouraged you to, they have their self-driven courses. You go in there, you log in, you take a course on a digital um, tool or program that you like. And then after that, you know, you, you are able to face different kinds of opportunities uh, that the, the, digital, the digital space is, is presenting. So that's, that is this crucial partnership there. We're seeing Kenya government uh, rolling that out to be able to then expand digital literacy, um, including opening up um, digital hubs, uh, you know, uh, across across the country, almost every constituency now, 290 of them are having these constituency uh, digital hubs where young people can then, you know, con convert or coalesce around uptake of digital literacy. So in, in, in a couple of years, uh, we're going to see a lot of that uh, demand coming up um, to meet uh, different kinds of platforms set, set by both uh, uh, Twiva and, and, and Marketforce. But uh, uh, maybe we can hear from Christian before we go back to uh, Sylvia. It was a very, very inter um, interesting presentation. As you notice, I'm an investor. I'm from uh, Berliner Ingelheim, which is a pharma company from Germany. It's on this, almost on the size of Bayer, if you're familiar with them. Uh, and I'm from our Make More Health team, which is our team that supports social enterprises all across the world. We are mainly focused on health, as the name says, but we're also focused on the 
environment that creates health. And I can totally see how your solution, so income is one of them, really helps with that. I mean, it could also be, of course, people that provide pharmacies that provide health-related goods. So yeah, the first question was, of course, um, if you have plans to raise further capital and what kind of capital would that would be. And I think just a comment for the digital literacy, we actually uh, support an enterprise called Healthy Entrepreneurs. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They're also, I think, from Kenya. They build, they um, support micro nurses, you could say. And um, they also found that digital literacy is a big problem in our head of IoT of our um, meta region, so Middle East Africa region, actually is helping with them to build also digital literacy skills among those people. So if that is a topic that you want to take further, I think it's also something where we can make a connection. Great. Um... So th thanks, thanks for that. Um, we we are actually looking to to raise further capital, and this is simply because our mission is to become um, the the bank for merchants, right? So a digital bank for merchants. Um, I, I don't have details of of what that will look like yet, but please keep in touch, and and we'll be able to discuss that further. Um, and then very happy to to discuss anything that you know could add value to to our merchant partners and um, yeah so anything around uh, uh, you know health education but also specific uh, insurance or micro insurance products around health uh, happy to discuss that and see how we can sort of incorporate that into into our platform. It would be great. Are you are you willing to openly um, disclose what type of capital you're looking for? Is it mainly equity or would you also be interested in um, debt? Uh, so actually in our last round, it was a mixture of equity and debt. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it will be the same for, for the next round. Um, yeah, but but please please reach out and, and we'll be able to give you details. We'll be happy to. Thank you, Roy. Pleasure to meet you. And thank you, Charles, for giving me a chance to do, pose my question. Most welcome, Christian. Most welcome, Christian. And I'm, and I'm happy that you've made the connection with the... Um, with Roy at Market Post. Um, Sylvia, your hand is up. Do you wanna pose your question? Um, while we're still locating Sylvia, is, is, was there anybody else who had a question? I, I think- um, oh, There you are. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. think, I think you answered my, part of my question was on who is incurring the internet cost, especially for, for those people. Now that you mentioned the hubs that the government is um, setting down the infrastructure and all that, but I still think internet is a very huge challenge when it comes to bridging this gap. But it's good to hear that the government is actually doing the work to do that. I haven't been, <laughs> haven't been back home for so long. So that's why I'm catching up on this thing. So I'll read up on that. So yeah, thanks. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Yes, yes, uh, government is trying to do a lot to expand our space. Also the Communications Authority of Kenya um, through the Universal um, Access Fund is also trying to de-risk initial investments to allow for expansion of internet access by the service providers. Um, and so we're seeing a lot more of that also uh, by the Communications Authority of Kenya to just uh, drive a lot of investments by you know, uh, putting down the initial infrastructure to allow for then um, service providers and investors to go into those spaces. Ajay Sharma, I see your hand is up. Please go ahead and put your question. Yeah, uh, the question's for Roy. Uh, Roy, what are you doing in terms of two things? One is the supply infrastructure and also are you putting up your own warehouses? So how are you taking care of logistics and how, what are you doing about storing the goods? So is, it, is your model asset light or you're actually building the backend logistics and supply chain and warehouses? Uh, Ajay, Ajay, hold on to that, to that question. Um, Roy seems to have um, in, uh, experienced internet problems. No worries, no worries, I'm right here. Yeah, yeah so uh, Sylvia, Sylvia, you see some of the challenges. Uh, even in a call like this, uh, we still experience connectivity problems. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an everyday uh, work, you know, it's, it's everyday work. Um, so, but hold on, hold on, Ajay. Uh, is there anybody else who has um, some question, especially for Tweeva? Uh, Tweeva, this specifically to a product that we've launched in Africa. Uh, we've launched a, a product for small businesses to manage their inventory, create an online store. So the product itself is digital. It's not a physical good. Okay. 
Uh, do you have influencers to sell financial apps as well? It's easy to sell cosmetics and you know dresses, but how do you sell a product like Shopify, which is similar to what we do? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I would like to start by saying that we are pushing um, platform um, uh, for Arizona State University across Africa in five uh, countries. So um, it's sort of a different product. Um, that's one. Number two, we have worked with an Indian based company called Tesca. And they sell um, tools for activates uh, um, for education uh, industry. So just to give you visibility into the type of products that we are able to push. Having said that, we have pushed uh, financial uh, products in Kenya, not necessarily in Africa, but yes, absolutely. We have influencers uh, that can push that kind of a product. That would be most likely on the influencer marketing part to start with, and then start to look into the conversion by leveraging the social commerce arm. Okay, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you, RJ. Uh, is, is Roy back on the call, Imani? As we wait for Roy, Priska Ezuzu, please go ahead and put your question. Okay, good morning, everyone. And thank you for a wonderful platform. Sorry, I, I'm just gonna be, but I want to ask a question. Do you, do your coverage include Nigeria? And if it does, um, do you have um, more like a platform to sell something like um, solar energy, uh, instrumental solar energy to people? Do you have an avenue to be able to push that? that that's my question. Yes, Peter, I think it's your question. Um, and she started by say, asking if you're in Nigeria. Yeah, and yeah. if you can sell the solar in Nigeria, solar, solar panels. Absolutely. Again, I start by saying that we have worked with a company, a UK based, but has presence in Kenya. They are called Solar Tech um, and they sell solar products. Which, which is actually one of our success stories because we sold out uh, their products within three months. So we created troubles for them, which is something to be proud about. So absolutely, we can move um, those products. We have not launched the social commerce bit in Nigeria, uh, but influencer marketing we have executed um, in Nigeria and Ghana, Senegal and Benin. Um, so yes, we have the capacity to execute here. And the beauty of the platform is that if you look at how we are configured, um, one, we are asset light, and the other bit is that we are leveraging existing uh, infrastructure, social media platforms. Um, so we don't know boundaries in terms of how do we push a product in, um, say, Nigeria or Kenya. The only flavor would be the resellers. Uh, but again, ours is very easy to activate um, the resellers or influencers. Um, and push that kind of a product. So absolutely reach out. And I believe there's something we could do for you, given that we have seen success stories uh, with similar products. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, are, there, are there more questions? Uh, we seem to have lost Troy. Um, so Ajay, we will we'll take your question, uh, you know, and then we'll, we'll uh, pass it on to Roy. Um, but uh, I see a comment there. There's something in the comment section here uh, from Rachel. She asks, uh, well, I she, think this- uh, um, is up, so she, can, she can put the question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I hope I'm audible enough. Okay, thank you, uh, Charles. A great presentation uh, by Peter um, and Roy. I'm keen to understand the percentage of women in their portfolios. I didn't hear that mentioned. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have Roy on the call? I'll just go ahead and respond and maybe Loy can respond to the same question. Yeah, please, um, please go ahead to that. I highly appreciate the, the question. Uh, number one, to, to give context uh, into how we look at this is I'm a MasterCard Foundation scholar, uh, which is something to start uh, by saying that um, through the scholarship, we were trained to be intentional and actually to make sure that uh, we are serving not only marginalized uh, people in the business uh, that uh, we are seeking to serve, but also women and marginalized uh, businesses as well. So we have number one been intentional in terms of the businesses we are pursuing. There was a presentation from uh, Sabrina from Zoomi. Um, and they are targeting women to uh, sell the, the products that they focus on, on fashion and clothing. And so those are the type of the 
partnership with us when I'm happy that we are actually working on something with her to start to serve all the retailers on their portfolio, which are 100% are women. We are also working with other partners like Capsum, and what we do is to be intentional in the split of the businesses we are focusing on. It tends to be 60% uh, percent on uh, for women-owned businesses, but also, which is something we discovered by just looking at the, port the portfolio that we have, a lot of people who are using social media platforms uh, to sell their product is truly skewed to, to, towards our gender, uh, women. Um, and also, if you start to look at the demographic of the social media influencers, people who are creating um, a job for themselves, a gig or an income or diversifying it, um, again, it's split today 70-30%. So we have 70% uh, women who are actually the resellers. So one, we are intentional, but also it's skewed towards those numbers uh, without us having to try to uh, work the equation. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um... The floor is still open. We've got, we've got a couple of minutes to go. Um, so we're, we're open to more questions from the audience. I feel like Charles, you're like, oh, it's her again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, that's not a light knot. Guys, so what is next? Are you guys collaborating in the ecosystem? Because all the problems you all are solving seems to intersect a lot. Is there an opportunity for future collaboration? Are we, are we working in silos? Uh, what's the plan now that you guys are all on the same platform? <laughs> it's not like you don't need to make a pledge, but it's, it feels like a huge problem to solve that requires collaboration. Thanks. Uh, Peter, as you respond to that, um, feel free to mention uh, the round table, the recent round table that we had and some of the amazing opportunities that are growing out of that with the ecosystem, please. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you um, for the question as well, uh, Sylvia. One, um, one of our true vehicles of how we scale this to serve more businesses, more MSMEs, and to truly create value for them, meaningful value, and how we create more digital, digitally enabled, uh, that are actually dignified for the social media influencers or the resellers we use, we must go through pursuing strategic partnership. And we are very intentional and aggressive on this one. And we have queued north of 20 strategic uh, partnership. One of the main one being, of course, KCJF, not only as a funding partner, but also to offer mentorship guidance and linkage to other partners. For example, being on this, um, amazing opportunity where you can learn from others, exchange learnings and insight. And again, that contributes to uh, how we move to, either to the next phase. Um, there has been forums, summits and sessions that have been facilitated by partners like KSJF, Recently, uh, we had one, I believe, a week ago, an, an opportunity to see other players within the ecosystem, what they are doing, and to explore areas of synergy in terms of how we can work together to further serve, like you uh, clearly articulate, we are truly serving the same people. So then it would be better for us to co-create and to collaborate, to actually serve them better. So um, for us as Twiva, we are asset light. We don't want to go into the business of say the logistics and fulfillment or shipping these products. So um, it only makes sense to activate a partner like Sandy or any other player within the ecosystem to serve that. And they actually the better people to do so. So we collaborate not only outsource, uh, but also to see how we um, amplify what other people are doing. Like I mentioned, this, through the same session that happened last week, we were able to be connected to Zooming. Um, and have quickly moved forward to integrate those uh, thousands of retailers into our platform so that we can help them gain access to affordable, accessible, and digital access to market through leveraging uh, new platforms. Um, and of course, as a country, as a continent, we must continue to embrace the new ways of doing business. Um, early on, you would find people disputing creative economy, or creators or influencers, but I truly believe that this is a vehicle for us to create um, more opportunities for the small businesses. So there's a spectrum of 
uh, partnerships that we are pursuing. And absolutely, I could see areas of synergy between Twiva and Hepta Analytics, given the work that you're doing uh, with emerging uh, technologies like uh, machine learning. And we can collaborate there to further make sure that the platform is robust to truly create meaningful value for the people we serve. And of course, if there's anyone who sees areas of synergy here, please reach out and we'd be more than happy to collaborate and co-create value. Thank you. If you can see on the chart, my colleague um, Santos has shared a link to a recently um, held roundtable. Uh, we, we was on the digital solutions and how SMEs are harnessing the power of digital tech to, you know, not just disrupt value chains, but to also create work opportunities, uh, conversations cutting across companies like like Triva and, 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 and several others in, in you know in how um, digital uh, tools present Kenya today with amazing amazing opportunities and 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 would like for you if you if you can log over to there um, and and watch some of those things uh, and as Peter said um, we are open um, to partnerships. We are open to collaborations. We are open to uh, working within an ecosystem that is supportive, that allows for for complementary roles and, and, and growth. Um, and I'd like I'd like to encourage that we reach out to you know companies like Twiva, make the connections. Uh, a forum like this is open to all of us to seize the moment, make the connections, you know, and just make it work. Today, there's 2.3 million plus unemployed young people in Kenya. We are all trying to find how we can contribute towards addressing that, not through um, trying all trying to squeeze ourselves into formal jobs, but to think out of the box and to imagine, reimagine work, you know, and reimagine job creation and, and, and simply use whatever tools we have today and tomorrow to expand spaces within which we do stuff, you know. Collaborate, you know, expand it and expand the economy. You know, but the more we expand the space, the more we create room for more players to come into that space. And I'm, I'm always every day. I am proud of companies like Triva uh, and Peter, young people that are on the forefront of reimagining the, the the world of work and, and and how we will perceive work, not just for today but tomorrow, isn't it? Um, uh, are there any more questions um, from the audience? Uh, we're, coming, we're coming to an end. Um, so, uh, Peter, I'll give you the floor to, to, to make your rallying call. You know, you have, you have a floor um, and you have an audience. What's, what's your rallying call? And what, what collaborations are you seeking with the ecosystem? What are you looking out for that will enable you rapidly grow. Um, just to mention in 2021, Twiva uh, was, was, was listed as among the top 20 high growth SMEs in Kenya. You are poised, you are poised to, to, to go to scale. You know, you are a positive disruptor in this space. What will be your rallying call to this audience uh, beyond, beyond uh, uh, what we have today? Yeah, thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, I think for me and other startups and scale-ups like Zumi that has had presented earlier on and uh, market force, um, I think the help we need is the linkage, and particularly so for an early stage, a startup like Twiva. Um, and I think that is one way uh, anyone on this um, session can contribute uh, at the early stages. There are doors, of course, and I'm sure everyone has interface with the challenges that a startup, and particularly so an early stage startup, has to face. Um, there are those doors that um, you are you actually don't need to know because you're in there, but you can open them for us. And our job is if we get a seat on the table. It is ours to articulate the value that we create or bring to that table, whether it's through collaboration or things like funding. Like I said, uh, we are currently raising for a seed round of three million US dollars with a commitment of one million US dollars for a round that we recently opened two weeks ago. So again, are there investors in the room? It's an opportunity for you to be something part of something meaningful, uh, and of course, um, you are an investor, and of course. Uh, 
to make sure that we can also work with you to create value for you. Uh, but above that, for me and for the other startups that we're presenting here and within the portfolio of KSGF, it's just that linkage uh, to get to the strategic partners that we need to talk to. For Twiva, these are things like Google, Facebook, the meta ecosystem, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, the TikTok, the Twitters, uh, to make sure that we build an infrastructure that is robust, uh, to make sure that we are pushing products and content on these platforms. And what we are trying to do is to digitize our MSMEs so that they start to take advantage of these platforms. So um, my ask would be um, anyone who is blessed enough to knock those doors on our behalf, uh, that would be of great value. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, um, Peter. And, and I'd like to take this opportunity to, to you know, appreciate you um, for being part of this conversation. Uh, I know I put you on the spot a lot, um, but then you seize the moment and you spoke it to the audience very well and I appreciate that. Um, we are coming to the end of this session. Um, if there are no other questions or comments uh, from the audience, um, I would like to appreciate everyone and to hand it over to Imani. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Charles. Really appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Peter, for coming in and Roy and Sabrina in absentia. Um, so yes, everybody in the audience, you're welcome to interact with us. We have a booth, uh, Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. So when you navigate to the exhibitor side of Brella, uh, we can continue to interact. Um, you can look at what we've shared on there. Um, also go to our website, kenyacatalyticjobsfund.org uh, for further learning papers and um, other things that we have produced as a result of running this program. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Alpha. Um, yeah, I'm glad we, I hope you've all learned something and you're taking um, some nuggets out. Kindly feel free to network with some of our speakers uh, on Umbrella. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next um, sessions. So yeah, bye. See you, Umbrella. Bye.